Hello friends! So if you don't see the red live in the corner, then that means I'm no longer live. But feel free to message me if you have any questions. Today's going to be a fairy tree stump mug tutorial. So I was going to give it a few minutes to see if anyone wanted to pop on. Um, two of my mugs that I'm trying to use are still turning. <laughs> I realized uh, yesterday that when I got home from work that um, I was a step behind on my prep. So um, I've been up since 7, booking it, trying to get those ready and get the files uploaded to my Airtable. So there's a link. Um, there's a link in this description. <laughs> that should have the um, air table to it and hopefully it's the correct one I was trying to copy and paste on my iPad so um, all of the files are in it um, that you'll need for this tutorial and um, the descriptions and links to products like at Michaels or um, just anything and then toward the bottom half of the supply list is just generic crap that I use when I make tumblers so the first top half of it is specific to this tutorial but the second half of the supply list is just stuff that most people have when they make tumblers hey Denny. so this is what we're making in case you didn't see the event and you just happened to stop by this is um, what I'm calling a fairy tree stump mug. I'm going to go over all of the steps. I have several in process so that you're not watching the entire time because it takes a couple days to make. But it's super cute. Um, we call these 3D mugs when something sticks out on them. And so this little fairy door is sticking out. So I found the fairy door. So if you want the origins while we're waiting on some people, see if they want to get, jump on. Um, so I was walking through Michael's and um, I love to walk through Michael's and just look for stuff that I can maybe put on a mug. Um, I don't know if y'all do that. It's like one of my favorite things to do. And then I come home and I stare at it for a little while and figure out what can I do. So these little doors are um, in the miniature section. Um, there's, they got like some fake grass and some um, all sorts of, it's kind of dollhouse stuff. Hobby Lobby has a real dollhouse section. This one's just a bunch of miniature stuff. So um, these doors, this one is about $5.50 and this one's like just over $6. I'm not sure why one's a little bit more expensive, but you can use a coupon on them. So this door is cheaper than a piece of fabric. So if you think about how much is this costing me, this door is cheaper than a piece of fabric if you use your coupon. So um, I brought it home. And I've started to put it, you know, up on some cups, trying to figure out what cup was curved the best to um, use this door. You know, and that's not bad if you wanted it up here, but it's kind of up here where your hand is, which might be okay. You know, and you might be able to make like a little sidewalk down here or something. You know, but this mug. Sorry, I keep walking off. This mug, the door fits kind of perfectly. It's real, a real good fit. So this is from Stainless Depot. So then um, I went on Pinterest and um, tried to figure out how can you make a fairy house without a roof because you know to kind of get the full effect you need a roof so I started looking and looking and I found a fairy house on Pinterest that was in a tree stump so I said you know what we can make this mug a tree stump so that's how we try to make this work since there's no roof now if you want to do a whole different design and try to draw like the edges of some shingles up here you know it might get a good a good feel for a roof um, so you can go for that 
Um, I haven't tried that yet. But so that's if you're curious why is it a tree stump, it's it's trying to incorporate the shape of the mug into the design. All right. So okay. So again, I have this complete supply list on an air table that I have put a link to in the description. So I'm going to try to quickly go over the supplies that you need. Um, so, of course you need a stainless steel mug. Um, Walmart has um, a good mug. I haven't tried it yet to see if the shape is a good mug. But um, it's up and down. It's not curved like this. So if you want to run out and get a mug tonight, because these are at Michael's, you can have one of these made by Monday. You don't have to um, order these from Stainless Depot. So, um, so, but I did get this one from Stainless Depot. It has a little black lid that goes on it. Um, so you're going to need a mug. I'm trying to figure out where the camera is. Sorry, guys. This is why I was testing it all out. Okay, so you're going to need a mug. Um, if you're going to use... The alcohol ink wood grain method, you're going to need some alcohol inks. So, um, I think I used caramel. And maybe ginger on this one. And I'm not the best wood grainer. My husband usually does our, our wood grain. Um, so, um, I also have one. That are that's over there turning that um, I used acrylic paint for the wood grain instead. Hey Meg. So um, if you haven't done wood grain with acrylic paint, it's real similar. Um, the colors that I use for my wood grain with acrylic are nutmeg brown, melted chocolate, and just a hint of black. You really don't even need the black. It might be backwards. But um, these are all at Walmart for like a dollar. So the reason why I chose on the second one I did to um, use acrylic is because the alcohol inks kind of leaked, leaked under the peekaboo on the vinyl. And so if you were if you weren't planning on kind of re-glittering, then that might mess that might mess you up a little bit. Okay, so um, it, you also will need paint brushes. So um, I just use these folk art type uh, talcum brushes. They're dry. Don't have don't they don't need to be wet at all for the um, acrylic method. You need a paper plate. That's to put and mix the the acrylic paint if you do the wood grain with acryl acrylic paints. So you also are going to need some temporary vinyl. So these are my decals. That I've pre-cut. Still gotta figure out where the camera is. Um, and for my temporary vinyl, I just use this self-adhesive vinyl. It's removable from Hobby Lobby. Um, I got a whole bunch on clearance. Uh, for this was two twenty-four. So um, I, and I try to get it if I can in super bright colors because it kind of helps you see it um, when you're trying to pull the peekaboo. Um, so that's why this was orange, but. This is um, this is just what I use for my removable vinyl. Okay, so um, you're gonna need a fairy door. So right now, the only fairy doors I've really been able to find are at Michaels. Um, I've, I've favorited a few um, on Amazon, but they're like eight dollars because you have to pay shipping with it, and I don't know how well the curve is on them. Um, but these two are almost identical um, and these are at Michaels so you're gonna need a fairy door you could try to do um, uh, make a fairy door out of clay um, but to get this amount of detail um, it, it's gonna take you some time and you may as well pay the three dollars if you use your coupon and just save that step um, that's my thought uh, you might be able to paint over this if you if the color schemes don't go, but isn't that little flower cute? I'm going to put some sunflowers on one of these. Okay. 
Jessica, well, um, we'll we will catch you um, later. This will be available for you to watch, and we appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> Have fun at the birthday party. Eat a piece of cake for me. Okay, so you're gonna need a fairy door. Um, that makes that's what makes it the 3D effect is because that sticks out. You're also gonna need some E6000 to glue the fairy door on. Um, I've been using this purple E6000. I get this at Joann's. You can use your coupon at Joann's. Sometimes Michaels doesn't like you to use your coupons on adhesive. Um, you can get this all sorts of places. The silver tube will work too. Just make sure you're getting clear. I've accidentally purchased white. I've accidentally purchased um, black E6000. So you always want to make sure you're getting clear. I don't even know if the purple one has a different color of the adhesive if all purple tubes are clear but make sure you're getting clear okay, you're going to need some sort of weeding tools to weed your vinyl with this is just that Cricut weeding tool that standard um, it grabs pretty good and if it's a real intricate piece this is called a pin pin p-i-n p-i-p-e-n um, I got this at our local craft shop um, you can order these online. You can make your own with a um, pencil, like a um, mechanical pencil and a straight pen. Um, so these are called pen pens. These are really great for weeding a HTV, but we're not using HTV on this one. You're also going to need a mechanical pencil because you're going to mark your segments for glitter. Let's see what else do we need? You'll need some sort of white spray paint, Krylon works, um, Rust-Oleum 2X works, just make sure it's a paint and primer. Um, and then you'll need the general cut making supplies, you know, scissors, gloves, epoxy, all that fun stuff. PPE for your epoxy. One of these chip brushes is good for dusting off the excess glitter. These, uh, Dollar Tree has these, Harbor Freight has these, um, Michaels has these, so um, this is what I use to dust off my glitter, um, so these are great. I'm trying to kind of clean up my space as I go. Okay, and then um, this here is a wooden fence so I'm going to try to get fancy um, here in a little bit and instead of using the vinyl for peekaboo on the fence I'm going to try to glue some of these uh, fence pieces on so we'll see how that works um, makes it even more 3D this was at Michaels um, back in the unpainted wood section it's hanging up um, I think it was maybe Maybe seven dollars. It was the best priced one, and it was actually the best best looking one. They have some black ones right now for Halloween, but unless you're trying to do a Halloween fairy, which would be super cool, um, I wouldn't want to try to paint this white. There's a lot of edges and stuff, so um, I believe I used the coupon on this. So one of these will last several cups, and this is not necessary. You can do your fence post with just vinyl. Okay, so glitter. So we're gonna get, we're gonna go into the glitter part of the tumbler, but um, you're gonna need something to go in this in these windows. Okay, and so I I selected this real pretty um, gold shimmer because you know it's like inside um, it, maybe inside of a leprechaun's house would be gold. Like a bunch of fireflies are in there. Um, it's not, it's not the best color that goes with the wood grain, um, but it's still really, really pretty. So if you wanted to do something real fiery red or something, you could just, um, just know that what you're picking is close to the honey of the wood grain. So what I used, um, I put one layer down. I used gold bling from Glitter Emergency, and that's that's the first layer, and then the second layer. Um, I use Gold Member from Radioactive. 
She's super pretty. So, um, you know, if you have anything similar, you, you can use, um, this would work by itself if you wanted, if you really wanted to do, you don't have to have this chunky, and the chunky um, kind of makes it a little bit more complicated, and you'll see. So, another glitter is um, the green here. So, um, I glittered here and here with green, and this was peekaboo, and then I decided that it needed more, like, vines. So I hand did all that. So you don't have to peekaboo all of this part. This is just, um, I did it with Mod Podge by, by hand. So the only place that I really peekabooed was right here. So that's optional for you guys if you're going to do your glitter later. Um, I would definitely peekaboo the windows um, with the vinyl. Because this chunky, you're not going to be able to get it um, as precise as I did the vines. So your windows won't look right if you try to um, do them later. So I would definitely peekaboo the windows. Um, so for the green, um, I used Lily Pad the first time. This is a Charlie Rose glitter, and I'm affiliate of Charlie Rose. Her her glitter is gorgeous, um, but some of the feedback was that this was a little bit too green because this is almost a color shift um, so this time um, I was going to try Emerald City from Glitter Emergency to see if that helped it any be a little bit more ivy green so I'd love y'all's feedback when y'all let us know you let me know what's going on if, if you didn't like something um, or you would do something different I love hearing that Okay, so back here for the fence, I peekabooed um, white. I think I used Yaya's High Flash, but um, Charlie Rose Magnolia is gorgeous too. And I, I am an affiliate for Charlie Rose, so I can get you a link to um, her glitter that she sells to the public. Um, it's very, very sparkly. It's a little bit larger of a cut. Um, and it's super gorgeous. So just let me know if you're interested in her glitter. And um, I can recommend some colors for you. I can show you some um, items that I've made with them. So um, Magnolia is super, super gorgeous. It's one of her most popular colors. So um, I chose to do the handle in colorful glitter. If you want, you can just wood grain the handle. Um, but so you're you're gonna need some sort of fairy colors, typical fairy colors. So I think I used Barney from Glitter Emergency. You can tell I'm a fan of Misty. Teal Twinkle Bling from Glitter Emergency and Oasis. So my thoughts my thoughts behind this handle were um, in Sleeping Beauty when the the fairy godmothers are fighting trying to decide on the color of her dress and they're they're waving their wands and they're slapping each other <laughs> with their magic you know it's kind of all over the place that color so that's that's kind of what I was doing to that handle almost like a fairy had touched the handle and again just wood grain it if you don't like that or stripes do stripes whatever you want it's just kind of awkward to glitter a handle so so do we have any questions so far so that's the supplies and that's what colors that I use. So you can use similar colors. You can change it up. Um, somebody said for me to glitter the entire cup instead of wood grain. And then wood grain just the um, fence post. Which might be a little difficult. Probably could handle it. But um, the, the whole idea that I had for this one was that it was a tree stump. So um, that's why I didn't need a roof. Um, so... So I appreciate that that feedback. I think it was in another group, but um, it didn't necessarily match the exact exact idea. I do want to do one all glitter sometime, but um, you know, right now we're working on just the tree stump version. But if y'all want to make a different version, go for it. Um, and I have a little fairy on the bottom. All right. So, um, moving on, we're, it's time to glitter. And 
need a Mod Podge brush. I have one right here. So these are my, I'm a Mod Podge girl. <laughs> I have been since vacation Bible school and probably kindergarten. So these are white talcum brushes. Most of the time I do the um, gold, but there's not really much of a difference. These are at Walmart or Michaels. Michaels usually won't let you use a coupon. So um, the base glitter that we're going to do is going to look like this. So I'm out of mugs and I just epoxied that this morning at 10. So this is uh, if you're curious um, as to cure times on epoxy, this is FX Premium. Um, I have a screenshot. It was right at 10 a.m. when I did this, and it's 2:30. So this is four and a half, if that hours, and I can touch it. So I could get this off my turner, hang it upside down, and um, put something else on. So if you're, the epoxy you're using is 8 or 12 hours um, and you have a lot of turnaround, you might check out FX Premium. Um, I love it. I don't have a single problem with it. It's not super thick. It's not super thin. Um, check out my epoxy mix and tutorial. But um, yeah, so I can touch it. I mean, I could still feel it's a smidge tacky, but um, I'm not hurting it, touching it. Okay, so no questions so far. So what, what I'm going to do since I don't have another mug is I'm just going to show you the process on this little um, Ozark lowball, I think is what they're called. So you're going to want to set your, I'm going to do this away from the decal, that little um, raised part for the Ozark. I'm going to do it on the opposite side. You're going to want to, make sure y'all can see. You're going to want to put your um, door kind of down where you would want it. Make sure that if you were to set it flat, the door is not going to be glued down so low that it would make the, the cup sit crooked. So I'm going to hold that door there and I'm going to take my pencil. And I'm going to draw just a little outline so that I know where this um, door is pretty much going to be hanging out when I get to that part. So you won't see that, especially after you peekaboo everything. So that's just to let you know where the door is. So then um, I kind of look at the cup. And I ask myself, how high up are the windows? Are the windows, oh, sorry, are the windows close to the door? Or are they far away from the door? And I draw like a little divider line. So um, I'm making segments. And this one actually has a nice little natural bend in it so that could be my my natural segment so I'm just drawing a little line so I know what I'm glittering because when we do that glitter like you can see it's real real kind of messy because it's going to be a peekaboo okay so there'll be like a window here you don't have to draw the windows if you don't want to there'll be a window over here so um, I don't want to start my, I don't want, you can, if you wanted to make your fence go all the way around to your door, you could, but um, I like to kind of leave some space just so I know um, that my door is going to be good when I go to put it on. So I kind of like use where I'm assuming the window will be for the start of the fence. So you'll see kind of where over here. So pretty much if you're doing a mug, you could just go straight across and that's kind of a good spot for your 
fence to start. Okay, so since I don't have a mug on this one, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. So this is going to be green for the peekaboo. And that's going to be peekaboo um, plants. And you'll see that. So this back here will be fence. So this is going to be white. And then all up here will be peekaboo because there's going to be a real pretty um, stained glass window back here on my design if you want to put words you can you can pick a boost them a saying like I believe or something so all of this up here is gold so now I'm just gonna real messy glitter those parts I'm just gonna leave that where the um, door gets glued on later I'm just gonna leave that as blank as I can So you're starting to see how that's kind of the, the, the hidden beans of this cup. So see there's green for, for trees and we're, I'm going to put vinyl on this here in just a second. It's hard to see. So this is where the little um, plants go. This is the door. Um, back here will be the fence, and here is the um, stained glass, and then the front windows. So on this one, I kind of brought the um, fence level up because I felt a little bit on this one that the fence was a little bit squatty. Now that was kind of cute, but I was going to try a little bit bigger of a fence on this one. All right. So, um... We can glitter real fast. I usually uh, do the gold first, then the green, then the white. So all this top part gets gold. And I do two, two layers of glitter. And then I use hard coat Mod Podge, which I don't think is on, I don't think I mentioned that earlier. I think it's on the supply list, though. I'm just getting my Mod Podge out. So this top half is going to be gold glitter. So you don't have to be really neat with it because it's going to be a peekaboo. Have y'all ever done anything like this where you kind of start one way and then go another with it? So you kind of don't know what, so this is like the underwear of the cup. You don't know what panties they're wearing. We got fairy panties on today. Alright, so. This um, gold bling is gorgeous. But it's a good base color for the other, um, but you could use it alone if you needed to or wanted to. It's so sparkly. So I'm not worried about up here on the edge because all of that's going to be covered in the wood grain. So I can be real messy with this. That's the gold. I'm going to do the green. We're going to do glitter emergency. 
Emerald City. So there's just a couple of spots that get green and they're on either side of the door. This little chip brush comes in handy to knock off the extra glitter that you don't need. So there's some green. There's some green. That's my decal, that's the width, so I just want to make sure I have enough green to cover that for that decal, and I do. So um, I've, I've given you the recommended sizes in the files, so you can alter it, if you, especially if you use a different size cup. You guys can do this on a 30 ounce if you wanted to. I just thought it was super cute that it was a little mug. I'm going to use a little chip brush to knock that extra glitter off so I can do my white now. So um, I don't do the handle right now because all of those colors from the handle would get all kind of all up in this business and we don't want that. So I'll wait until later to do the handle. there's not a handle on this but you get the idea I should have gone to Walmart and got another another mug but didn't so because I've been making them I've, I've got my sheets of paper labeled so that I can quickly use that Right, so now we're ready for the white part. So the white gets all the way back here because that's the um, that's the fence, and then it gets on the bottom because that's the fairy. The fairy's on the bottom. So if you wanted to do um, some different colors um, down here for the fairy, you could um, just know whatever colors you need to do you need to need to look good with the surrounding. So like if this is wood grain, um, and you did like a dark red or something, then you might not even be able to see it very well. So we need white. I'm sure y'all can see. I open my door. It gets warm in here. I can, my epoxy loves the warmth. So, um, I'm a Razorback fan, I'm in Arkansas, and my husband is, um, Ole Miss. He's from Mississippi. So, they're playing tonight, they're both SEC teams, and, um, so we call it the Scott Bowl. <laughs> and, um, the first, like, four years that we were together, Arkansas happened to win, um, and so I wanted to make a trophy. Or a plaque or something but until they won I, I felt that was bad so I think last year or year before Ole Miss finally beat Arkansas so we're kind of kind of okay on it now right, so I'm gonna use Magnolia this is Charlie Rose this is for the white fence and I'm doing my best not to shake any of the green glitter or the gold glitter into that leftover pile down there so that um, I don't get any of that contaminating in my glitter container. Alright, so this is going to sit and dry for a good half hour or an hour or so even a day, depends on when you want to come back to it. 
So once this dries, I will take this brush and I will knock off the top layer, all the extra glitter that the Mod Podge did not, did not get it stuck on, and then I'll do another coat of glitter. So for the gold, instead of putting the finer gold on here, I'm going to put my thicker gold member on here. Um, and that way I get that real pretty firefly look in the windows. Alright, so if you don't have um, a thick, because I just got this, you can, you can just use this gold bling. It's still going to give you a real pretty look inside the windows. Okay, so you just don't have to use this thick on both layers because um, the chunky gets real thick. On y'all know this, right? So my advice, once you do all of the the glitter, is to spray seal it so your epoxy will grab on to that chunky because you know the epoxy likes to repel off the chunky. I got in a hurry yesterday and I forgot to do that, um, and you'll see that here in just a second. Right, so that step um, out of all of these, this was step. I have a little list here. So step two, you mark off your cup with your pencil and you glitter your sections. Okay, so I'm going to put this one to the side. We're done with this cup for today. So we're going to pretend like we have skipped forward in time. And um, after the glitter, after you've glittered it, you need to put um, probably two coats of epoxy on it because that chunky glitter, um, that first coat is still a little bit bumpy. So if you want your um, wood grain to be nice and smooth, I would do two coats on it. Those of you who use the counterculture, you might be able to get away with one coat on it, but um, if you don't do the double coat, um, it can kind of give you some weird looking wood grain, um, but it kind of adds character too. So just, just something to think about. So do two coats. So this technically would have two coats and, and I pretty much just leave this alone. This is still that solid white cup. No, there's no epoxy right here because when I E6000, I want to try my best to just E6000 that to the cup. That way the, um, decal or the door is not sitting on top of the cup really really far because it's got two or three layers of epoxy that it's glued to and I still really haven't messed with the handle at this point yet okay so now I'm ready to peekaboo so I need to put my vinyl on so I've included all of the um, files that I use you're welcome to google your own um, I got a lot of these out of the Cricut store So um, you have your, um, and I'm going to show you when you're, when you're weeding them. So this is your, the sprigs of grass beside the front door. This is your uh, fence post. This is the um, ferry for the bottom of the cup. These are your front windows. You can uh, stretch them out, make them longer, taller, depending on the size of your cup, but you'll need to do your own measurements on that. And then there's two different um, stained glass windows for the back. So um, this one was this one. Um, and there were some extra little um, nubbins that were right there that kind of gave me some problems. So on the files that I have given you, um, I removed those little, those, they were tiny little pieces so that you don't have to worry about them. Now, if you get a hold of the original file that I gave you that's a full circle, you cut it in half, those nubbins will be back. I don't, I don't know what to call them. <laughs> They're not really a nubbin, but um, it was a little bit of a pain to try to weed that. So, um, so I took those out. So there's just two different um, versions of the, the stained glass. Uh, this one is kind of um, flower. So if you're going to use the flower door, this one might be a little bit funner for it. Alright, so when you're weeding, you have to um, be considerate of the fact that you're doing a peekaboo. So what you would normally weed, you might not weed on this. So these are the um, grass. So this one's simple.
So you're just taking, just like you would weed any anything for the grass. Crap, I didn't bring any. I have some over there. Some transfer tape. Apparently transfer tape needs to be on the list of supplies. Okay, so if you look at the window, I didn't actually use, since I didn't put vinyl on top of this, the only parts that I used for the window were these inside little squares. So the stuff that you would typically keep for a decal, you're going to toss. This is why I wanted y'all to see me weed it. So typically you would throw those little inside squares away if you were doing a window. But since we're peekabooing, we want to keep those. Okay, so um, I can't get this outer ring to get off of the file, so it just it goes in the trash too. It won't um, weld together with the other, so if you're wa wondering about that, um, you could possibly leave it on there. I think it's going to be a bigger pain in the booty because you're not going to really get the good effect, but um, if you want to leave it on there. Okay, so now we're down to the frame outline and then the inside windows. So we don't really care about this frame outline, so we're going to get rid of that. We just want the four squares. This final is finicky. So these are what makes up our windows. These look smaller than they, they should. But I think I've raised this up higher, so. So as long as that fits in your gold area, you are good. If, if your window was so big that it's now coming down here, you need to go recut it. Because it's not going to fit in your gold area. You need it to fit in your gold area. Okay. So we have the trees, or the grass, that's going to go right there. So now we need our um, fairy. The fairy is just simple. And that's going to go on the bottom. So it'll peek a booth through with the white. So I made this fairy a little bit bigger this time. So the fence, the fence is a little bit backwards. So um, this came from the Cricut store as well, and I can't get that outside line to get off of it. So you don't need, you just kind of need the inside pieces of that fence. So this is kind of really what I wanted y'all to see. So if you're going to do um, the fancy fence, you don't even have to do this part. If you're going to do that wood fence um, that I found, you're going to glue the fence on later. You don't even have to peekaboo the fence. Okay, so there's an outer ring on this. We don't need that either. Again, I can't get it to um, weld. Uh, if you find one on the internet you you might not have to deal with that part so we want to get rid of that outer ring this one was just in the Cricut store so okay and then on the inside we need that um all of that inside gone so um I actually took a little bit of time and welded a little bit to get some of the inside uh, there were some extra insides that were in there 
on the files that I gave y'all. It was trying to um, separate each um, each fence post. So the reason why they are um, in such short segments, why why don't we have just a really long fence? Because um, we're not warping this at all. We're hand placing these. So for example. It, it's hard to wrap this whole thing around here and leave, let it be flat. So if you had a piece of paper, like a vinyl decal, trying to wrap it, do you see how it goes up? Because this cup is not perfectly flat. If you had one of the ones that was perfectly flat, you, you might not have to do this in sec sections. So I believe I counted, and I think you need four, four of these. So I have a bunch already cut. I think that was according to math. I don't know, according to Mona, what in the real world it's going to equal out to. So I know this sounds like a lot, but it really, you can make these pretty quick. Especially if you're going to make several at a time. I think I spent the most time working on these decals this morning, fighting with Cricut. Okay, and then the last decal, so you have your grass, your fairy, your front windows, your fence. The last decal is your um, window. So this is the hardest one to weed, and then this is the one where you're going to want to try to figure out what do we want to keep, what do we want to toss. So you can see here that um, I kept kind of where the window panes would be, like where the actual glass in a window would be. I didn't keep the frame of the window. Okay, so that's where this gets real, real crazy, is where is the pieces of glass. So we're going to get the extra vinyl off so we can figure out things. Okay, so I feel like this big chunk here, this chunk here, that would be the glass. So I need to get rid of this outline. I cut this on um, outdoor vinyl instead of temp vinyl, so it might be causing me some trouble. So if you want to find your own window, you can look up um, stained glass window silhouettes, um, gothic silhouettes, I think was a good, you see these want to pull up. Was a good one, um, so I gave, I've given you two choices, and I sliced the circle in half and kind of edited because they didn't come in semicircles. So you're you're gonna wanna find something that you can make um something that's kind of symmetrical or just do whatever you want. I found some real pretty roses. But on this one I had shrunk the window in the back so much that it was kind of limited to the shapes. So if you um, make your fence smaller you can do more elaborate windows or like a big decal that says I love fairies or Things like that. Ooh, I'm having a time waiting this crap. So, if you don't want to do all this peekaboo stuff, and you have some really pretty vinyl, you can skip all of this and just put vinyl straight on the wood grain and call it a day. You don't have to use glitter. But anytime I can not, not use a decal, I'm all for that. So now I gotta kinda put my window back 
together because it went all wonky on me. Alright. Okay. So this is going to, instead of this design here, we have a different design. So I felt like this was more of a flower, so it kind of goes with this flower door. So this will go back here. Hopefully I measured right, yeah. So it's covering all my gold. So that that glass will be peekaboo to gold. All right, so now I need transfer date. I said I had some in here. I don't have any clear transfer tape. We go grab some real fast. I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. I'm back. Okay. Best laid plans, right? Been up since 7, and I still forgot that. Okay, so my biggest piece is... I'm going to put this out of the way. This guy... that duck brand contact paper and I do not like it and I did find some at Dollar Tree the other day so it's super happy I haven't opened it yet do we have any questions so far I haven't even looked oh okay let's see Angela showed up hey Angela you're gonna skin a zombie backwards. I, well, you're gonna have to explain that. Karen needed four. Four what? Oh, have you already got that far? You needed four of these? That's cool. Okay, you're awesome. You're you're on the ball, man. I want to see what you when you make it get it made. Alright, so I'm just trying to straighten out the edge of that. Okay, so this is the duck brand. I do not like it. So when I first use the piece, I stick it on my clothes to get it kind of untacky. Because um, it is not kind. Stick, stick, stick. Um, the this I can just hand place so if you can watch me so all this is doing is just giving me a guide for later when I want to make the ivy And if you don't want to do the ivy and you just want to have the grass, you don't even have to do the grass beside the door if you don't want to. It's just an extra little color in there. But I don't even worry about the contact paper with that. So, let's stick the fairy on the bottom. Is 
She doesn't really even need transfer tape either. Now, um, I did notice when I put it on that what I thought was the middle of her really wasn't the middle. Um, she's over there. So she was kind of off to the side, so I think I kind of had her where her head was toward the door. But you might stick her over to the right just a smidge for her to feel like she's even with the center of the cup. Because I'll show you the other one I've got going. She's kind of offset just a smidge. So you're kind of wanting the back of her head to be in the center. And feel free to look for a different fairy silhouette. That was just the one that I, I found. And if you wanted to put her in the back here, you could just adjust your glitter. You're sculpting a zombie face on a modern curve and covering it in flesh tone tissue paper. Ooh. You go send it to Meg's mom. She likes those scary movies. <laughs> she cracks me up. Okay. So now we need to do the fence back here. And um, for the peekaboo and the stained glass windows. So we'll do the front. Definitely want to use your transfer tape on this so that um, all of them stay together. I forgot my little burnisher. So my door, that's why I have my little drawing so I know where my door is. So there's the door. So you want this over here. So somehow I got those real small. Those should have been bigger. And this epoxy is still just a smidge tacky. Don't do don't do like I did. Let it be pretty cured. Alright, window number two. Trying to line it up with that window a little bit. So there's going to be ivy. If you do, do it like I'm doing it, there's going to be ivy all running around trying to kind of fill up that empty space. I really didn't think she would have a giant picture window in the front of her house, but that was just me. If you want to do a whole bunch of windows, go for it. Okay, so now the back. Let's do... Let's get this out of the way. So, um, I like it like this. Kind of going down. But, you know, you can do it like this, too. Either way. For some reason, I, I kind of liked it with the circle on the bottom half. So um, you, this one is a little curved on the cap, so it's a little bit tricky. It's not, not if y'all do vinyl, y'all are used to that. So we like the curve going from the bottom. So this I just try to line up as much as I can. And make sure where you're putting it is gold is underneath it. So that way the gold is showing through the windows. Because if you got it down too low, then you're going to have gold showing through. Or, or white, the white fence part showing through. And the reason why we are peekabooing this is um, if I wanted to hand paint this chunky, it wouldn't have these nice sharp lines like this does. It would, it would just be a big blob of windows. So that's why we're using the peekaboo. Um, if you have really pretty gold vinyl, just skip that part and use the gold vinyl. You'll save a bunch of glitter. 
save the peekaboo time, just go straight for it. And if you have two coats of epoxy, you won't have the bump bumps in the um, in the vinyl like I do because I only have one coat because I ran out of time because that chunky's a little bit bumpy. Those of you who use the thicker counterculture might not have that problem. All right, so I'm gonna make sure all that's pressed down really well so that when I go to spray paint it, my spray paint doesn't get up underneath it. So that's the stained glass window on the back. And now I just need to do the fence. So now the fence. What you're gonna do is you're gonna line it up with the bottom. She's in the same piece of transfer tape. Ugh. Tissue paper flesh. Yuck. Sounds like dreams. So I'm going to start it over here. I'm going to line it up as much as I can. And I'm going to try to get it to go along the same line along the bottom of the mug. So now for the next one, there's no lines connecting this and this, so I'm going to overlap these two, so this will actually have two pieces of vinyl on it. Because you're going to pick all this off after you do the spray paint. And those of you who are whizzes with the warping, you might be able to just warp yourself a, one long fence and call this a day. Okay, so I'm trying to keep that bottom fence line together and the top fence line. And trying to make this kind of look semi-straight. So these are bigger fence posts than um, I used before. So I think I'm going to slice this like a mermaid scale. For those of you who have made mermaid scale cups. So that way the fence posts are kind of a little bit more even. So play with your y'all's um, sizing on this. There's different options. So now this here. So that's going to be too much. So I might just cut off. Let's see. Yeah, I call that a day. Cut right up on that line. Apparently, I only needed three on this scale. So, if you shrink your um, fences or anything, it'll vary what you need. All right. So, putting that vinyl on is the hardest part. It's not even hard, it's just tedious or something. I'm not a vinyl girl. All right. And it is a little challenging to work around that handle. So just take your time. Try to get it lined up. And since this is peekaboo, you, you won't see if real bad if that fence post looks weird. And um, if you're going to draw ivy on stuff, you can, you can kind of get ivy down here and um, it, it's all good. So all of this will be wood grain, so you won't even see any of that. So you want to mash that down so when you spray paint it, the paint doesn't get underneath it. Okay, so, 
to save time, I don't think I'm going to run out and paint this. Okay. Um, I think if y'all need to know how to peekaboo, there's, I know Sarah has done a peekaboo. But what I would do, and again, I'm not, I'm not messing with the handle. The handle's still pretty much metal. And this is pretty much metal. But I'm going to go spray paint this whole cup white. Okay, and then I'm going to come back in, and within a rather quick time, probably about 15 minutes, I'm going to let that paint set. Um, I'm going to wood grain, either with alcohol ink or with um, acrylics. So, I'm um, just going to show you guys. If you've never seen um, someone wood grain with acrylic, that's what it kind of looks like. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this to the side. I'm done with this for this tutorial. But right after the tutorial, because I don't want this vinyl to sit on here really long. I'm going to personally run outside and spray it and finish doing this wood grain. I'm just not going to do it on the tutorial so we don't, we're not here all day. Okay? So the magic of TV. I did that this morning. So because I did not um, seal my vinyl, um, I got some weird bumps up here. But it kind of looks cool. kind of gives it some character. So the door... I'm going to use the little sunflower door. So this is what we're about to work on. So um, I was in a huge hurry this morning when I did that, and I went ahead and wood grained right over where I had been trying to keep the the um, the blank part. So I'm going to epoxy or E6000 this door right on top of that epoxy. So that's what we got going so far, and I'm, then I'm going to take my fun um, icing writer. This is Mod Podge, and I'm going to add more glitter all over this cup so that it looks like this. So it's still real basic, but I have the bits and pieces that I need to get a good a good mug going. So um, real fast, if you've not seen acrylic, when, because when I did the um, alcohol ink, alcohol ink kind of got up under the decals, the temp vinyl, uh, because it's thinner. So if you want to use acrylic paint. This is melted chocolate, nutmeg brown, and just a black. And these are all at Walmart. So just give you a quick tutorial on that. You don't really even need the black really. Not for this look. Okay, so what we're doing is we're trying to make wood grain with acrylic paint. And that way the um, alcohol ink doesn't get up under and mess up your um, your glitter, the, the look of your glitter. So, um, it's white paint because you just took it outside and spray painted it. So this is what it would feel like, just flat white paint. You take a dry paintbrush. Crap, that one's too dry. Take a dry paintbrush. You dip it in the lightest color first, kind of like you would a wood grain, and um, kind of come over here. I might get, get a different one. Get a different one. dry paintbrush, 
dip it in the lighter brown. Kind of um, get the paint on the brush, but you don't want it real thick or heavy. You want it real dry. Then you start to straight up and down. So you're, you're mimicking what you do with alcohol ink. But some of that white kind of helps make make the wood grain. So it's real dry. So if you need a little bit darker you can grab some brown or some black. Just keep going straight up and down just like you do with wood grain. The uh, alcohol ink and then you can get some darker brown. Don't get a whole lot on your brush because it's just going to cover everything. So you don't want to cover everything. You're just kind of trying to get it all the way top to bottom, top to bottom. So I recommend you practice on a different cup first if you're going to do the acrylic. But um, I do like it because it doesn't get under your decals because you haven't pulled your decals yet when you're wood graining. So if you do get some black in there. And a lot of this, if you do mess up, you can um, almost erase it kind of like you do with alcohol ink. You just don't want too much because then you're literally painting your cup brown. And that's not, you're trying to alcohol, you're trying to wood grain it. So that's how you can wood grain with acrylic paint. Hey Karen! So you guys have some options. If you want to do the alcohol links, go for it. It looks really cool. Looks good. It's real shiny. Um, just know you're probably definitely going to have to go back over your fence posts because that alcohol ink is going to kind of stain um, on top of that white. But I like, to, I like to go back over my stuff anyway. Okay, so fast forward. We are now here. Okay, so this is the fence. And on this one, I opted not to do the peekaboo fence. Instead, I was going to try to be fancy and do a 3D fence. So I got these little fence posts at Michael's. Use my keybind. So I'm going to cut some of them off. might just slide right out. Since you have the door sticking out, why not have a little bit of fence post sticking out, right? And then that's one less thing to peekaboo. Alright, and these were already white, which was awesome. So, um, I'm going to do my best, and you can cut these down as well if they're too long. Just got to make sure you get them all cut the same size. So, we're going to start from here. You can make it curve a little bit. Look, I made it curve. Awesome. Look at that. So this is where the glue can get real grody. So I'm using E6000. Put on a glove. So creative. 
Girl, I walk around Hobby Lobby and Joanne and Michael's and just look for stuff. I'm like, what can I glue on a freaking tumbler? <laughs> so this all started with this door. That's why we're here today. Okay. So I'm gonna try to bend them all. Oh. Well, maybe bending them's not good. <laughs> maybe we won't bend them. Guess that was a fluke. That one was a fluke. Okay, so this glue doesn't glue fast, dry fast enough to make them bend. If y'all have any questions, just let me know. So we're going to try to get this to glue on, and then the epoxy will do a lot of this too. Need my little cradle. Keep it still. Got it. My cradle's using is um, holding a dragon scale right now, so I'm gonna try this. This is super stringy. So I'm gonna draw with glitter. I'm gonna cover these with glitter after I do this and make the little fence post lines. So those might need to be cut down just because they're sticking out so far on the bottom. See that? So I might need to pull them off and just cut them down. And so, um, big shout out for this epoxy because it cured in about four hours <laughs> this morning. So you want to go through and mark them all so you know that we're all the same size. That's probably a better idea. But I had plenty of little fence posts in that package. And um, I thought about trying to make my own out of these little sticks, um, these little craft sticks, but then you have to paint them, and nobody's got time for that. These already had the nice little peaked um, corners. So
So you guys are getting the idea. So now this one's going to be even more 3D than the original. And that E6000 does not like to be in the air. So, I like a Mod Podge these. Got these at Joanne. I love these little bottles. So the epoxy is going to hold this on too. So I have some, um, I don't have it in here, some super glue. So we might use the super glue instead. But you're getting the idea on a 3D fence. Right? Okay, so I'm not gonna make you stay while I experiment that. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of all this crap. So if you wanted to glue the door on before you um sealed all this wood grain in you could because that that uh, was still exposed it didn't have any epoxy on it um just when you go to epoxy it be really careful and um try not to get any epoxy on the front of the door now i have it all over the edge because i have epoxy filling in in the in that crevice there but um, i was real careful you can even put painters tape on the top not to get any epoxy on the very tip top of the door because it's shiny. I mean, if you want to cover the whole thing in epoxy, you can, but um, if you just get a strand of epoxy in there, then that little strand's going to be shiny. All right. So, um, I wish I'm a super glue in here. So the door is going to be here. We're going to this door. So I'm going to get my green glitter, I'm going to go ahead and take this off because that Mod Podge is not cutting it. The E6000 did really good, it's still staying. You just got to get it out of the tube every time you need it. Which is kind of a pain in the booty. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the door on since it glues down pretty quick. So I'm going to put this door on. I'm going to make sure it's centered in between my two leaves. But um, I don't want it so far down that it's going to stop the cup from um, sitting straight. Thought they good, you guys? So I could have definitely made these windows bigger. These were bigger. I'm not sure how I managed that. They were smaller. So it does try to kind of shift on you. Definitely have your cup cradle out. I said mine's being used and I sold my other one at my flea market. Okay. Any other questions? Kara needs to get some fabric. Yep. Hey Crystal. Okay, so the door came from Michael's both of these doors and um, these are the only two they have they have a really cute hobbit door it's a lot wider than this one so I don't know um, how well it would mash onto a cup this one has a curve in it and that's what made me realize that this could go on a cup because it has a curve if it was just a straight door 
I don't know if we'd be having this tutorial right now, but because somebody made this curved, um, I was able to put it on this cup fairly easily. So these are at Michael's. The one with the butterfly is um, under six bucks, and for some reason, the one with the little sunflower is um, just over six bucks. I'm not quite positive why one's more, but I was able to use my coupon. So this little door was cheaper than a piece of fabric that we normally put on our cups. So if you don't want a wood grain cup, you can um, you can just glitter the whole cup. Uh, I just I feel like the shape of the cup needs to tell a story. So um, this is supposed to be a tree stump. I was also thinking about trying to mimic this um, this brick pattern, the stone pattern all over it might take a while but trying to make it look like it the whole thing was stone okay so that's that's pretty much on there I mean it might move a little bit set the cup down it's not hindering it any that that's your main thing I think I let the other one sit like overnight let it sit like just like that overnight okay so now to do let me get my green To do all of the ivy, so that's one of the last things that you do. You um, this was just kind of the starting point for the ivy. So you can either use the really fine one that um that I got at this at Joanne. This is Mod Podge in here, and it's already stopped itself up. There it goes. Well, and you just draw. Like how Ivy would climb. Kind of like cracks. Kind of like the thicker one. So this is on Amazon. No, it's not going to work for me. Um, I have a link to it in the supply section. On that air table. This is a for royal icing in the baking section. It's two ounce one. It's awesome. I use this for all sorts of stuff. Swore it just worked. So it's dried up in there. Where did that little pen go? Trying to get the dried out. Still waiting on your FX to arrive, Karen. Yeah, Karen got the FX on that huge Labor Day sale they had. It's a really good deal. My FX has been working just amazing lately. Once you get to know it, it's, it is one of the best, in my opinion. Of course, I haven't tried a lot of others. So, yeah, so I tried to, on the wood grain, on the bottom, I tried to make it look more like the inside of a piece of wood than, um, than the outside. And I struggled with putting a fairy somewhere out here. And when I didn't do it, I was like, well, I can put one on the bottom. Right. <laughs> All right. I got Mod Podge on my glitter catcher. So I got a new glitter catcher. Okay, so we're gonna do the fat Mod Podge. And so this is just kind of the starting point for the ivy. If you didn't even want to do that part, you didn't have to. So I just kind of have it running branching off as if it's growing all around the tree. There's no real right or wrong on ivy. So all this is going to get another coat of epoxy.
I'm loving those little fence posts. So once that dries, you take your chip brush and knock that off. I think I'm set mine somewhere else. So you're going to do ivy all over the cap. So just let it run all over the cap. Now these windows looked quite plain. So I also outlined them and um, I picked the wrong glitter. So the glitter I picked I thought was white. It was actually translucent purple. So um, I'm going to try this one because I feel like this one's going to be white. So um, I tried to go back over that with the white, but you can see where it was purple. It kind of looked cute, but it, I was really trying to get it to um, outline a, a nice white. And then back here, it got to be kind of a challenge. So I made this design back here a little bit more simple on the files that I shared. So right here I'm just outlining that window with this tiny little Mod Podge. Come on. It's drying up on me. Sorry guys. Y'all saw it working. There's a piece of dried right there. Okay, getting green on my white. I feel like this is a lot more complicated when I'm trying to show you than when I actually did it. <laughs> okay, so, can y'all see that? So what I'm doing is I'm outlining that window and if it was bigger, it wouldn't be as tiny. And I got this little bottle at Joanne, and this is just Mod Podge. So we're trying to make kind of like a wooden little frame around it. Because, you know, a little fairy house would have really good carpenters to have a really pretty little frame. This is my favorite part of making cups right here. It's all those little intricate details. Alright, so if you use a real white glitter, you could even use white paint right there. Um, like I said, the glitter that I selected apparently was a secret. It looked white, but it really wasn't. So when that dries, I'll take the brush and wipe that off. And if it needs another coat, I can do another coat. So I would repeat that process back here as much as I wanted to outline it out here so that it stands out against this brown. And um, the same over here. So you'll do green at one point, you'll do gold at one point, um, and then you'll do white on your fence at one point. So that way they're not all mixing together. Um, and then on her, I kind of just left her alone because trying to go back over her, I feel like like the little ruffle of her skirt, you're going to lose that if you try to re redo her. But I don't know if y'all can tell where the alcohol ink right there on her wings kind of bled under the decal. So um, that was why I switched over to trying to do an acrylic wood green instead. Was because the alcohol ink got up under the peekaboo. So those are just thoughts. I would love to see what you guys do. You don't have to do alcohol ink at all. You can just glitter 
and just let it be a house and you know people can use their imagination as to what the roof looks like you don't have to have a fence you could have some elves back here or something um, this was just what my brain threw up <laughs> and um, and how I recreated it so I really want to put some sunflowers to match the door on here but I've got you know I've got some others <laughs> that I started so um, I, I, I could do that but super fun super different this one um, is already claimed I'm giving it to a friend for a birthday happy birthday Martina and um, so happy it's going to someone who's gonna um, enjoy it and treasure it and um, I'm gonna have to make myself one for work because um, I love me some little fairies so if you guys have any questions I know this wasn't a like full full you saw every single piece of thing I did but um, I tried to bust it up into sections so we could fast forward and get get to the important stuff um, also at this point after I did the the ivy and the only reason I did the ivy was just because it really needed it there was too much wood grain it needed it needed and it's so pretty the more I look at it the prettier it is so um, after you do the ivy um, tape off this door so you're not spray sealing it spray seal the rest of the cup which is clear um, triple thick Krylon or Rust-Oleum 2x don't spray that door I think it would make it look weird if it was shiny it's just me leave the door kind of um, flat like it is so tape off with painters tape right there um, then uh, you can do your handle so I take this guy, this fat, the fat, and I have a link to it um, in the air table. He's clogged up again. He usually doesn't do that, guys. There's just a, a piece in there I need to get out. You're going to see a lot of him lately. So I take him and I, I do a thick coat just randomly on the handle. And then I put the colors the pretty fairy colors on the handle um, and because it, that he's so thick what what this guy puts out you don't have to do two coats but try not to let that glitter mix in with all of this because this is supposed to be not fairy colors and the hand in my in my design the handle is fairy colors so you want to make sure that you're really careful and really neat about it so that it stays its own its own thing and I'd love to see y'all's ideas um you know put some little gnomes on there put put the fairy drink and tea do do a white cup white glitter and make her put some water slides on it make up make a whole little scene or something you know you don't have to do it just like I did but that's just some steps and how to section it out and I have all of the supply lists that I use on the air table and it's linked in this live video. Let's see if you have any questions. Yeah, this is a fairy decal and the the cut file that I used um, is in the air table and it's in the events as well. I shared that. So um some of you guys are already cutting them and getting them on cups. So, all right, well, everybody's out watching football or enjoying the rest of the summer. So, I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to go swimming. But if y'all have any questions, let me know. And I really, really, really want to see what y'all come up with. Um, because these are super, super cute. And figure out what else we can glue on cups. We need to glue crap on cups. <laughs> um, that's my favorite part. And I will see y'all later. Bye.